Blessed be his kingdom. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. He has put to death, he was put to death in the 
flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism, which this prefigure now saved you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Godzilla, hard to see, hard to grasp, uh, but in those fleeting moments when you see him glorious and want to see more of him, a lot like God. God is always seen just to pick on our glass, grass, hard to see him who want to see him, and uh, never quite feel like we get enough of him, at least often that's how I find myself feeling. And Godzilla is in many ways a terrible creature. He, in this movie, without giving too much away, actually is good. But he's still a monster. He's still terrifying. And another tagline for this being, uh, meeting is for this movie is Godzilla even less safe than Aslan. And if some of you have read the Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis, C.S. Lewis is a Christian writer who wrote the Chronicles of Narnia, Aslan is a lion. His lion is a Christ figure. And in this movie, there's this family of beavers, and in these books, there's a family of beavers, and the fathers of the and the animals talk. And these beavers are talking, and Tom, this, this uh, fawn, is telling them about Aslan, this lion. And one of these little beavers is listening with pie eyed and when Mr. Thomas is done talking about Aslan, uh, the, the, little, the little beaver says, but, but is he safe? You know, is Aslan safe? And Mr. Thomas says, Lord, no child, haven't you heard a word I said? Aslan is not safe, but he's good. And so if Aslan, this fierce wild lion, is safe, how much less is Godzilla, this towering monster, not safe? And it couldn't be otherwise. I mean, you think if, if, if there is a God, if God is anything like we believe him to be, uh, this being with the power to create everything, to destroy everything, you know, how could this being be anything but terrifying in some senses? This being who's so full above us that we can't begin to comprehend him. In the ancient mythologies, when they talk about God, they talk about the God as being capricious. Greek mythology, Roman mythology, the gods are very capricious because people couldn't understand why they did what they did. When we get to Christianity, we get to Judaism, we still can't understand God. When we say God isn't capricious, we just can't understand His reasons. And so this last week I sat with somebody who was uh, just having a terrible, terrible time, one of the worst times you could imagine, and they said, why me? You know, it just seems so unfair. Why did God choose to do this to me? And of course, we don't believe God chose to do that. But it often seems like God is being capricious, that she got the short end of the stick, that God is picking on her. That's often how we experience God, because God is so far above us. But what the Bible tells us is that sometimes we just can't understand God's ways. God is good. He may not always seem safe, but He's good. And in those moments where we're struggling, uh, we need to know that He does have His reasons, and one day it will become clear. Now, we may not have seen God. God may be uh, sort of fleeting, and He may seem terrifying at times, but we have seen Jesus. And this morning's gospel tells us that when we see Jesus, He makes God known. One of the ways He does it is by being our advocate. And if you notice this morning's gospel, it says that Jesus will send us another advocate. Well, who's the first that's referring to the Holy Spirit? Who's the first advocate? The first advocate is Jesus. And who does Jesus advocate for? He advocates for God. When we believe that God is angry, violent, vindictive, capricious, uncaring, distant, Jesus says, no, no. Jesus says, look at me. When you look at me, you see God. And if when you think about God, there's anything that doesn't match up with who I am, that's not God. When you look at me, if there's anything that doesn't match up with who I am, that's not God. And so Jesus advocates for God, helps us to understand God. And parakaleo literally, literally means para, parallel, kaleo, call, literally means call alongside. He wants us, there's, uh, wants us to understand that God is the one who is called alongside us to comfort us, to guide us, to bring us peace, to encourage us, to inspire us, to be with us. And so Jesus advocates for God. He advocates for humanity. Think of how we work for human wellness. Think of how we work for uh, the community of humanity so that everybody is welcome in this community, that nobody is left outside or ostracized. Think of how we struck out against oppression and justice. Jesus was always advocating for humanity. And of course, he advocates for us as individuals. Because if you're like me, probably nobody's harder on you than yourself. Nobody's harder on me than me. You know, I'm my own worst critic. I'm tougher. You know, no matter how hard somebody can be on me, no matter what they do, I, I guarantee you I'm probably harder on myself. And sometimes I just need Jesus to advocate for me and come to me and say, Rock, Rock, no, no, no. You don't need to be quite so hard on yourself. You are a son of the Most High King. You are loved by God. God created you precious in His sight. So He advocates for me and encourages me. And then I think that Jesus uh, just in general 
advocate for the lights, for light in the biggest and broadest sense of the word, and talks about some of you we might have light and have it abundantly. And so, I just bring all this into a wrap. We haven't seen God as clearly as we like. God is often elusive, and God is so different than we are, it can sometimes seem terrifying. But in Jesus, we do see God, and Jesus helps us understand that God is none of those things, that God is loving, that God wants to be with us. And then, uh, and then Jesus calls us, says, if we love him, we need to keep his commandments. We, too, need to be advocates. We, too, need to advocate like Jesus does. We need to advocate to others for God, help them to understand who God is. When people uh, present a picture of God that isn't true to who God is, we need to say, no, 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 no. We need to advocate for God. When people talk about this God who is hateful, who excludes, who is unjust, who is marked by prejudices, we say, no, 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 no. You know, that's, that's not God, you know. Uh, if God hates everybody you hate, that's not God, you know. Uh, and then uh, we need to advocate for humanity. We always need to work in ways, you know, advocate for the poor, uh, like with uh, backpack buddies or uh, the, the other programs we do. Advocate for justice whenever people are subject to uh, prejudice or, indiscrim or discrimination. We need to advertise, to advocate for the world itself, for the, for the planet, if you will. And when we do these things, uh, then we will know, uh, then then we will demonstrate our love for God. And that Jesus will come to us and reveal God to us with all his majesty. And as glorious as Godzilla is, God is more glorious still. Thank you for coming today. And I hope you have a great time. And have a great time with one another. Amen.
Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let each 
table come up. Um, we're going to form two lines where Rob and I will distribute bread. You will find wine behind us, and then you just kind of go out that way to go back to your tables. If you are gluten-free, where's Lisa Lentiman? Lisa Lentiman is right here. She's your gluten-free minister. So she's going to be standing right here in between us, and you're going to get both the uh, uh, bread and the wine. She's going to be a little bit closer to the table so she can get to the gluten-free challenge. But you, if you're gluten-free, you want to see Lisa. Now, food for the soul. The line, you see the, isn't that a fancy sign they made? Isn't that great? So the line is going to go there. We are asking, due to allergies and other things, that children under 10 have an adult with them just to make sure that um, everybody stays safe. So that's the line for the food. But that is after the service, after the last song. Any questions about any of that? New service times. Huh? New service times. Time. New service times. Okay, so um, if you normally come to the 10.30 service, congratulations, you just came to the 11 o'clock for the first time. You did a great job. Next week, we're going to have another 11 o'clock service in perpetuity, so it's 11 o'clock. If you come to 9.15, just come at your normal time. <laughs> that the band always prepares and is always the key and sets the tone for the entire ser service that a lot of you miss, you're going to get to hear them. It's going to be great. Okay? And they're going to be really excited to see you. And I will stop talking about this like this. Okay? It'll be awesome. Alright. So, new, new service times next week. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
please stand? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing to proclaim the glory of your name. We are holy. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you do it, drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take the remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.